Welcome back, Old World Explorers. Uh, Ashley from Freya is here, joining me again with a file as we peek into the remains of the Old World and the post-cataclysm um, existence we find ourselves in today. So thanks for joining me again, Ashley. Yeah, thanks for having me. What do you got so, for us? Um, so just some other pictures of, uh, you know, uh, our, our melted realm <laughs> that we find ourselves in. Um, but yeah, like this, you can see it's just a complete wasteland and this one goes down into the ground. Um, it just seems pretty obvious to me at this point, you know, the more you look into it, it's, you don't even have to look for structures. You can just start looking at the landscape and you start seeing, and this is actually inside. I've got, again, these, I don't have these in order. I wish I had them in order, but this is from a castle, um, Blarney castle and, uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah uh-huh. And, uh, but there's all these tunnels, these cave tunnels that connect to the castle, but I think they're just, you know, part of the structure that's melted now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then we got, we got this here. This is uh, up Lisky Hay or something. I don't know how to say it, but. So look at um, the stairs, eh? See how the stairs yeah. are sort of melted right in there? Yes. Like who so, would build steps like this? Look at this. How would history. they explain this to us, right? How would how would conventional geology and history try to explain this to us, right? Yeah, the they would say that. The, yeah, they would say first off, they would say this is older, very very old. The more damage it is, they just say it's older. That's how they explain it. So they would probably say this bit down here is carved, and this is carved, but this is weathered because it was so long ago. It just uh, erosion wore this down, and then they mm -hmm. built this structure on top of it. Mm -hmm. You know, but you can mm -hmm. see the variety of of brick damage like over here those bricks are uh look more deformed than these yeah. bricks from the you know variety of the way that the heat moved through the structures and back here too look you can see archways inside the rock yeah give us a little so, zoom give us a little zoom if you don't yeah, mind yeah. yeah yeah this isn't the best quality image but you can okay. see here you can see part of one here yeah over here and look at yeah. this rock here yeah just melted like ice cream and look we got some red bricks over here that are still intact yeah it's funny once you once you gain the eyes to see you just see the world in such a different uh, light, right? Yeah. Than the our trained version of the world that the that they give us. Yeah, and it I mean it all really happened in the 1800s. That's whenever they you know started like the first national park was in the 18 you know like 1850s I believe it was in the mid 1800s. But that was Yellowstone. They started like you know the um, World Heritage and all these UNESCO. They started a uh, kind of just getting, getting the foundation set of this is, this is the translation that people are going to see it as, I mean, all of it. And then they had their, their media, you know, their newspaper, their radio and everything and their education system. And it's just mm -hmm. really genius how they constructed this completely, a complete fabrication. Like our whole reality is just total fabrication. It's an illusion. Yeah, and all um, going back to that same time period, right? That, that, I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of people are getting into this whole reset concept because a lot yep. of people suggest we're living through one right now. So yep. Um, it's interesting how this is all coming to light and coming to our, at the forefront of our consciousness at, at this period of time, you know? Yeah. It's like the, the, uh, the apocalypse, the unveiling, you know, mm -hmm. um, but this is, this, eh? <laughs> what? yeah, I like, look at, I like the, uh, you get that slit window there and then you have the sort of mm -hmm. what looks like tight, tight brickwork, block work right, right next to it, to the right. Mm -hmm. Yep. But yeah. Right there. You can see like the horizontal lines and then all of a sudden becomes the big, big stone you know, balloon rock, whatever you want to call it. Yep. Where no, they melted really. together. No logic whatsoever to the mm -hmm. building process. If that were the case, you know, like there's no, no it makes, yeah. Makes zero sense. And like up here, you can see some detailing. I think a lot of these really old ruins like this, even the ones we just looked at, they were probably had beautiful decorations on them. They look just like the ones that are still intact. The interior was probably just, you know, breathtaking, mm -hmm. um, but it all just got melted away or they looted it. You know, a lot of these yeah. places are crime scenes. They go in and they loot whatever they can. Um, but yeah, see how this one isn't even symmetrical. It's asymmetrical. Mm -hmm. They would have never built that way. And these here, mm -hmm. and they literally call these arrow slits. That's, that's yeah. what they say. These are arrow slits because of course they tell us we were warring all the time. I had a big discussion with my husband last night about that. And, um, he thinks that the war and stuff is just, it's just, you know, uh, as, as natural as the air we breathe, but I disagree. I mean, if we look yeah. at the last 150 years, all of those world wars happen from the top down, mm -hmm. we, we wouldn't have been in any of those wars, you know, it's their bullshit. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, it's, the, um, it's the inheritor's narrative. Right. And it's a mm -hmm. way to wait, way to make us think that that's the way we are. And that's the way we've always been. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. 
And this type mm -hmm. of evidence is helping to bring that to the forefront to, to at least maybe it's helping people scratch their heads and say, well, maybe this doesn't make sense from a building perspective. So maybe something did happen here, you know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I've got a bunch of these. This is that same Blarney. Um, it, and I think the past, you know, the past few years, this is Blarney. Sorry. Oh yeah. That was Blarney. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But look at that. I mean, this is, if this top part wasn't here, geology would say this is sedimentary layers. Uh -huh. Um, or they would say that tectonic plates shifted and this got pushed up, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, but it's clearly part of this structure. And you can the, see the, that the, vertical wall right in the middle there like that. You yep. can see how it's walled. Right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right there. hundred percent. Yep. And, uh, the one, and you can see here where there's still, it's this thing would have been so much bigger and went down. Mm -hmm. See, look here, there's, there's a little entryway that goes into the ground and that's where they have the tunnels that I showed earlier, the slides, um, yeah. that they say there's all these like secret tunnels and those tunnels are always haunted and dungeons and torture zones and stuff. Yeah. Um, which is and again, just part of the narrative. To... They like to make it spooky, right? It's almost mm -hmm. like a, be scared of this, you know, don't look too close at this, be scared of it. Yeah. And I, yeah. And I think too, they create these really outrageous stories around it because then we're that, that distracts us. Then our focus is put on this. Wow. That's bizarre. That's crazy that, you know, and you're, you're trying to make sense of that. And so you're not really digesting what you're seeing, you know, mm -hmm. this is also at a Blarney. Mm -hmm. Look at that. The, the construction process didn't even make sense here. Mm -hmm. You can see how some of it's like stone wall and some of it's melted stone wall. And yeah. 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 How yeah. do you explain that? I mean, yeah, they, they're they totally relying on that veil to, re to remain over our perception. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and you're starting to see things like uh, them shutting a lot of these places down. Like they're not open for the public and things like that. It makes me wonder. It's like they they know maybe there are elements in our society that know that this awareness is increasing. And so they're cutting mm -hmm. us off, cutting off access to a lot of these places. Yeah, you know? I think and I think they would they would have destroyed all of these if they could. But they're just too massive. I mean, these things, and I wonder too if the old world they knew that there was some kind of cataclysm heading heading their way because just like that the city hall in Philadelphia that that you covered where the walls are like 20, 23 feet thick, you know, and there's some that have walls as thick as thirty feet, like they were mm -hmm. building these you know indestructible fortresses for some reason. Um, so I think maybe they knew that there was some kind of major cataclysm that was going to take place. This is a uh, uh, in Transylvania. This is the the um, Dracula's castle. Spooky. Again, we have that spooky mm -hmm. narrative. Yeah. <laughs> Look that at way that, you eh? don't notice. Yeah. That way you don't notice this massive brick lava that's pouring out and hardened connected to the structure. I, I had a funny comment on a video where I, I shared something similar to this. And uh, one of the commenters tried to rationalize it as like it was concrete pour that had gone wrong. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> it's like, well, yeah. I guess, but uh, yeah. And then, but then down here, they got some rocks and, yeah. plugged them into the the concrete you know yeah yeah that's fair <laughs> that's interesting yeah yeah that's like blistering that's whenever i see that look mm -hmm. on these buildings like this blistering was creeping up and it stopped for some reason like a flash yeah. just stopped yeah yeah and it, it it clearly happened from the bottom up it was from the inside out and from the bottom up this yeah. this heat the way it moved through the structure and notice too this uh tree here mm -hmm. like there's tons of pictures i found a bunch of pictures of this but i couldn't use them because right here the tree was in bloom and you could not see it's like a perfect hmm. shape and location to block the spit That's right here yeah mm -hmm. yeah you see that a lot in postcards and things like that too i found that anyway obscuring vision yeah you know yeah so. that's that definitely is a common theme um whenever you're looking into this stuff and yeah. this is in cappadocia which um mm. you know they typically look like the like the known buildings you've done videos on cappadocia but at turkey um, yeah yeah mm -hmm. But this one's just interesting because this one is still intact. So again, yeah. I think those like ice cream looking pointy blobs that they say they're carved into, I think whenever they were intact before the cataclysm, they looked beautiful, just like all the other um, old world structures that we see everywhere. You know, so this one, there's still remnants of that. You can still see some of the decoration and some of the huh. forms, but it's just completely smoked. 
Yeah, I was going to say, like, we're seeing the remains of, of a disaster. We're not seeing them how they were built at the time. Mm -hmm. So, the, again, it's altered our perception. We, we see what, like you're showing right now, it's like, oh, they built these out of uh, slate stone or whatever, flagstone, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And they built them like this. And at the time, like, it's still amazing construction, even in the state it's in right now. Yeah. But we're saying with this research, it's like, no, they were not built like this. This is the result of some serious uh, um, a cataclysm and devastation that occurred. And they were once beautiful structures like many of the structures that we still do have today, right? Exactly, yep. I mean, like this, they put little pebbles in here and little flat. I mean, yeah, it's yeah. just insane. And again, this they'll say is really, really, really old because then you're like, oh, that's why it looks all messed up because it's just so damn old. And people back yeah. then just built this way. And and, then, yeah. and they'll say too that they, they always say that they used like um, stone that was um, – like natural to the to the area because yeah. you find this stone everywhere because it's part of the building that's ex you know yeah. there's probably they're exploding and melting and just this intense event and so you find the the remnants all over the place and they'll say that those rocks were natural and they put it you know they just reverse it they reverse everything they do they reverse it so that the cataclysm happened to the area and that's why the area has mm -hmm. the stones that look like they're in the building exactly the reverse right yeah mm -hmm. this is crazy look at this one wow yeah look at that hmm and why would they ever carve yeah. and, and you know what I mean? Like they'll say that this was carved, but why would you carve way up here and in the middle here? Yeah. You know, why wouldn't you just carve down here where it was more accessible? And look, I guess they started these and didn't finish them. Yeah. Right. You know, like here too. Yeah. Very interesting. Totally melty too. You can see how it's just drippy. Yep. You like know. the facade, whatever um, different materials they had mm -hmm. were running down, running down the side. Yeah. Timeline is something I really want to explore about, um, mm -hmm. you know, when this happened, how it happened, how is big too, because mm -hmm. we don't have explanations. We have guesses. Um, sometimes people are always asking me too. I need, I need an explanation. If you're going to propose this, you need to tell me what happened. It's like, I don't know. I can't yeah. tell you, but I'm just showing you the visuals, to, you know, to, to show you that maybe it's not exactly what they've been telling us. Yeah. That it appear, it appears that something did happen. I did a video recently about, the um, carbon 14 event of seven, they say it's seven, seven, four, seven, seven, five. I don't know if you watched that video, um, no, no. but are you, have you heard about that carbon 14? Uh, uh, not too much. No, you can explain a little bit if you don't mind. Yeah. So basically there was a, a team of uh, Japanese scientists that discovered in 2012, they discovered the, the a cedar, a cedar tree had a, a ring that was, uh, would have had a major spike of carbon 14, and it would it would have been like 20 times higher than, than today. And like this kind of and they don't know where where and they found it since it's been found all over all over the realm. So there's evidence of this major, major event that increased the um, the gases in the atmosphere um, to un, unexplainable um, amounts. And so they think it was like a solar flare or, you know, a, um, it's something from the heavens, basically, um, mm -hmm. which it, it could have been, or it could have been from this or this and the heavens somehow. Mm -hmm. sure. uh, but regardless, they um, the amount of energy, and they say that this event would have happened today, it would be completely catastrophic. But since it happened in a time when there wasn't any technology, it probably wasn't that bad. Um, <laughs> exactly. And they say that the, the power that this event would have generated um, would have powered the entire world for 300,000 years. Like it, it's a, just an unimaginable amount of, of uh, intense power that, that took place. And I think maybe that's where we get the fossils and all these like bodies, like, um, mm -hmm. you know, all these, they have all their different narratives of where all these bodies come from. We have all these like pockets of, of bodies and, mm -hmm. uh, and then all the structures that are melted. So if, if, there would have been technology then, which I think there was, if this was the event that knocked this out, the, um, it basically would have brought in, it would have amplified the electricity and, uh, the like power surge. Like yeah. Power surge like a power circuit. surge. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Like a massive that. power surge in the circuit. That makes mm -hmm. sense. So I yeah. think that might've been when it was now, I don't know if their timeline is if, if it was seven, seven, four or seven, seven, five. And I, I have a theory that I don't know. Have you, do you watch alpha talks? Are you familiar with his work? No, no. Well, um, he, I, I would recommend him to anybody. He does really good work, but um, he's made a connection between the Statue of Liberty and um, that that could have been at the end of the millennial reign that 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 the Statue of Liberty is a symbol of of Satan breaking free of his chains because the Statue of Liberty you now has like um, shackled ankles yep. that are busted and all that kind of stuff. Interesting. And, uh, 
yeah so he he thinks that that maybe that's why that date is so important the seven you know 1776 and so once mm. i started looking into the carbon 14 i was like maybe that actually happened in 776 instead of 774 775 because that's just a guess mm. on their part anyway and that the millennial reign took place in between because that would have been a thousand years which is it says you know in the bible it'll be a thousand years and he yeah. also theorizes that um the uh if, if that already happened, the millennial reign and Armageddon and all that already happened, um, that that would put us in Satan's little season, in the short season of Satan. And yeah. it says in the, in the Bible that that takes a quarter of the time. So that would be 250 years of thousand years. So if you add that to <laughs> 1776, uh -huh. that would mean Here 20, we are. Yeah, 2026 <laughs> would be 250 would look at that, years. Hey? So, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's just a theory, obviously. And yep. there's a lot of ins and outs to try to, you know. Yeah, no, I, I've, I've seen little, a lot but... of the millennial reign and the, and the little season, and I think there's there's definitely some interesting uh, aspects to that. We'll put the link in the description so people can check that um, that out themselves. Um, yeah, yeah, the timelines are very interesting to hypothesize on for sure. And there's something yeah. suspicious about the 1776 and the so the founding of the Illuminati and mm -hmm. the founding of the United States, the Declaration of Independence, all happening at the same time. You know, yeah. And yeah, and this, this, uh, the West, the Western world definitely would, would be the, um, you know, the, uh, the, the kingdom that the, the top of the kingdom where, where Satan would reside and his, his minions would reside. I mean, we can see that this is like where all the disgusting, degenerate awfulness is pouring out of is coming from the Western world, you know? Yeah. And I know Sir Francis Bacon called it the new Atlantis. The mm -hmm. Americas was the new Atlantis. So there's a lot of interesting connections there. And I've, I've touched on a few uh, in my in a few of my videos how maybe the Declaration of Independence was like a was like a last uh, um, um, a vestige of the old world, just showing mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. as long as you hold true to this you can you can regain your freedom but you are entering mm -hmm. the little season you know maybe yeah. there's something to that too I don't know yeah um, could be yeah it's interesting to hypothesize on and none of us really know for sure but. Uh, we're digging into it and that's that's what's fun to do the digging too right it's mm -hmm. a lot yeah, fun on netflix yeah oh for sure and then right. i mean and you come across some stuff and you'll have like since i started doing this research i've discovered all these other channels that are also you know getting into including yours and it, like all these epiphanies that i came to on my own from my research i'm hearing other people also say and it's just um yeah, it's just really interesting that it's the the conclusions that we make individually, we're all kind of collectively making because we're, we're going through this process and um, the detective work is is resulting in the same kind of conclusions, you know, so we're not crazy. Basically. That's, yeah, that's why I find it important to connect and try to connect with as many people with different uh, areas of interest in this field as possible to try and try and, you know, make those links, you know, that that last one you had up, I was mm -hmm. going to try to get in there. The one with the octagons, the one before it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I see so much of that in the old world buildings, especially oh, everywhere, really, but in the Americas, especially the undersides of ceilings with the octagonal patterns, mm -hmm. the rosettes often in the middle of the octagonal patterns. Mm -hmm. So I think a big part of the old energetic uh, system had to, you know, this type of uh, detail work. You can imagine how this once may have looked. Yeah. Certainly was not built to look like this. Mm -mm. Right? No, yeah, obviously. Yeah, I mean, and look at the outside of it here. It's just totally melted. You can tell it's melted. Yeah, God, it would have been gorgeous. Yeah, they. Why would they ever come in here and carve into this rock the underside? Just carve this little section and like buff it out here, you know? Yeah, right. Like I never really got it finished, right? Yeah. The, the front never really got finished, and yeah, you really have you really have to not want to look uh, gorgeous, but yeah. So I think all those buildings would have looked, you know, badass like these, like we see everywhere. And look at this wall that's all blasted up, and I think this rock was party probably part of the original wall. You know, let's so. let's talk a little bit about sea levels, you know, because okay. so much of these are right on the edge of what we now call the sea level. It must have been a completely different landscape pre-cataclysm, mm -hmm. you know, and they, they have found so many uh, things underwater. Right. So we mm -hmm. know that that that's very possible that these uh, I mean, I don't even know. I hypothesize like what were the seas even what were the size of the bodies of water here in this realm pre-cataclysm, right? I think yeah. we're living in a completely altered um, mm -hmm. state from what it was before. So it's very difficult for us to envision what it may have looked like with the landscape. We talked about before we started recording, like the canals and the um, potential that we're really in the terraformed um, um, realm that was, was fried and made to look like what we now call natural. Right? Mm -hmm. or has become what we call natural but it's actually just post-cataclysm 
you know so it makes you wonder sea levels and things like that um and how the waterways work is are the seas just the result of some sort of cataclysm the, the cracking of the heavens the firmament whatever you want to call it <clears throat> you know all things to consider really For sure. yeah and i mean the fact that we find um structures on the bottom of the ocean tells me that the ocean wasn't there they didn't build structures underwater you know right. yeah. and and yeah i do think it's uh it's it's basically like the whole realm was fabricated you know like mm -hmm. The, the more and more you look, you just start discovering that it was just, it's just, we're, we're living amongst the old world ruins that they created this realm as mm -hmm. we see it. And we don't even know what the ground level would look like, you know, mm -hmm. prior to them even building, you know, yeah. and some people in this, I've heard, um, like whenever I first got into this, I was watching a bunch of like, um, true earth channels and stuff. And I would just be in the chats, like screaming, like, ha you know, like it's, it's all melted and trying to explain to people that's why i started making videos um mm -hmm. because it was like there was no one for me to talk to i didn't realize there was like this whole little niche community luckily i found mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. but um yeah the the response would be well where did they get all the bricks mm -hmm. and that's it's like i don't know but it, there's evidence that this did happen you know what i mean like it's mm -hmm. some people if they can't get the like you mentioned a minute ago if they can't get the full story it's just instantly shut down you know mm -hmm. they just they want, it, they want the full explanation or they're going to go back with the one they know they're yeah. just gonna fall back on the one that they were taught as children. Look at yeah, that that one was interesting. Sorry, I keep doing this to you. Oh, no, the, red, the red at the bottom, the yep. red brick at the bottom, right? Look at this one melted right here. Look. Yeah. And then to the left of that, you can actually see how it's still red brick, you know, yeah. perfect right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and then the whole the whole structure just sort mm -hmm. of goes boom. Yeah. It turns look into at, something completely different. Yeah, look at these these here are like melted into it. You can see where it's like running down. It was mm -hmm. running down. Also with that carbon 14 thing that I brought up earlier, yeah. um they've discovered six other ones, um, but they are much, much smaller. But those kind of events, it's believed that they would have been very short lived, like it they they um like grow and decay in amount of of, of hours, like mm -hmm. a very short amount of time, which also lines up to you know what we see with this kind of damage that whatever this was, it happened very quickly. And that's why a bunch of this like meltage is just caught, you know, mid drip, mm -hmm. you know, but yeah, look at those blown out. Yeah. The evidence is overwhelming. It really is. It's literally everywhere you look. Yeah. Everywhere you look like even caves like this, you know, like it's got yeah. an archway and these, it just looks like blistered, mm -hmm. um, melted stone. So the, the elaborate attempts of the Royal Society to graft this false uh, history and false existence um, onto where we, we are now, right? It's starting to become clear for those of us with eyes to see that, mm -hmm. that really want to know, right? And, and we know that they had their secret societies and their sworn oaths to each other and to whoever else or whatever else, right? The little season. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? So there's, yep. there, there's an allegiance there as well. Right. And it's not to, to uh, truth or to the people. Right. So, Oh yeah. It's not, it's not really that much of a stretch when you do the digging, you just have yeah. to want to. Wanna yeah. Go. And especially the past few years, all that bullshit that we just went through, you know, like these yeah. people are total fucking liars and they they're soulless. There there's no level of, because I think the everyday person, it's like, oh, how would it, no, nobody would ever do that on that kind of scale? You know, like mm -hmm. that's that's too big of a, a horrible act. And it's like these these people have no shame. No. So <laughs> no that's shame. that's what you, that's what I tell often tell people is say, no, no, you don't, you wouldn't do that because yeah. you have you have shame and you are soul. You have a soul. These people have have uh, cremated their care, let's say, which is one of their rituals. Right. Mm -hmm. They're, maybe not even people. We, we might be dealing with something yeah. we don't understand, right? They might be manifesting to look like us. And uh, when, in, in fact, there's uh, something much more going on behind the scenes, right? And I think yeah. that's a whole different rabbit hole, but it mm -hmm. uh, it's all on the table, really. And yeah. it's, especially when they when you realize that they've, they've, they've wiped that from our reality as well, the possibility of uh, that being possible, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they could be the what's described as the fallen angels, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also I, I did a video too recently where I was just kind of breaking down old artwork. That's um, like structural artwork. It wasn't, you know, like there's so much artwork from the old world to try to break down. But uh, to me, it looks clear that there was some kind of um, like almost like a parasitic outsiding outsider force 
that you see that that's just these bizarre, like the mouth clutchers, like the gargles and the um, grotesque, you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and there's the like mouth clutchers and stuff where they're just like, ah, and they just look completely insane and deranged. Like, why would they ever put that on a building? Because mm-hmm. it's a message and they don't want us reading body language or reading facial expressions. And that's why they had us covering our face and shit. They don't want, yeah. When, whenever we were, whenever we were, um, like generations before that was like an, you know, and there's nothing too that people talk about how they think people in the old world might've been telepathic and maybe they were, but I think we, we imagine telepathy, like some kind of sci-fi movie where you're like sending your thoughts and making this, this whole big kind of sci-fi connection, but it could just very well be that, that we can feel each other's energy and we read body language, subtle movements, facial expressions. All of that is a type of telepathy because it doesn't require sound and speech. Um, and so these old world structures with all these, like the Atlas architecture and the caratids and all that kind of stuff and the grotesque and goggles that I think there's messages there because they don't know why the hell they built those things. They don't know, you know? And so it's up to us to read the body language that the ancestors left behind in their relics to try to make sense of the story. I mean, I think there's clues there, you know? Yeah. And when you look at the footage too, of, uh, like the early 1900s of the people that are, you know, fully dressed, um, with top hats, and, you know, like I saw recently, I think John Levi had a video recently where they're swimming in the ocean, but they're fully clothed. It's like they don't know where they are. They're totally disoriented. They yeah. had all the awnings covering all the windows in, in the inherited buildings. It's like mm-hmm. they couldn't handle the sun, you know. So yeah. there's an interesting re- that reseeding element um, I find very interesting as well. Was there a reseeding of the realm? Um you know, it gets into the orphan trains and the mm-hmm. whole cloning technologies, which Mind Unveiled gotten into, which is, mm-hmm. it's all very interesting stuff. So um, I think there's much more to it. And now we're looking at, you know, a, uh, like you said, like if we get into the uh, the little season, was uh, was Lucifer and, and Lucifer's minions released into the realm? Mm-hmm. And uh, did they reseed the populations, you know? They still mm-hmm. need, they still need humanity. Did they manipulate humanity? Did they, ha, you know, have we, have we fallen from a, from a higher state of being yes, through that I, genetic manipulation? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, def- I definitely think so. I mean, I think we probably had senses that we no longer have. We were, were poisoned and totally, um, mm-hmm you know, brainwashed from, from inception, you know, and I, I think our natural state is more like children where they're enthusiastic, they're um, excited, they have a sense of wonder and curiosity, but they would have had the wisdom of the elders that were making these structures and stuff. So yeah. that, that would be like a natural balance, a natural that feels right, that sounds right. And that would have been right. They've got us so fucking lost in the sauce. You know, mm-hmm. we don't know what's up and down, you know, mm-hmm. and, they, and, need and to. They, they, they beat that out of us. They beat those those um, beautiful natural um, characteristics that we have that, that make us human, they beat that out of, out of us at childhood, you know, and then they, they're pouring all their media bullshit and their Rockefeller education in us. And it's just, uh, you know, uh, totally transforming us from our natural state. So we're completely disconnected, I think, from a lot of the senses that we would have had, you know, like yeah. even the, the visuals, the, the sonic, you know, the, the, the sounds and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, well, even even if uh, even if you think of the fact that they have to keep us down, like they have to use all these, you know, they have to do the spraying and they have to put the additives in our food and they have to have the five G towers up and they have to brainwash us with Hollywood, means that they're scared of our power, mm-hmm. of what we are. It's like they have to keep their foot firmly on our necks, right? Because they know if they if they let up at all, and then which is happening right now with people like you and I talking about mm-hmm. this and looking at the deception and, and ponder even just pondering on it we don't like we said we don't need to know we just need to talk about it and think about it we make these mm-hmm. connections by connecting yeah. you know so i think uh they, it's a desperate it's a desperate attempt to keep us uh um subjugated right? yeah all, the, all, all these different modes of attack but it's uh despite all that um we're still breaking free i think from that control mm-hmm. um, system and it would be great to see something like oh look we've, the people have taken over the vatican library and look at all the old world yeah. you know what i mean like i think the yeah, evidence yeah. is out there it's hoarded mm-hmm. they hoarded all this right yeah yeah they're thieves they are give thieves. it back to the people yeah give it back to the people mm-hmm. right. yeah i mean i think i think with the old world stuff like i was talking about with the artwork and stuff like maybe they were the phoenicians um i think there was some kind of outsider force and it's almost like they're they're jealous they're, they're jealous of us. And, um, and it's like, they sabotage this beautiful world that we had. I mean, they, they could have been the cause. Maybe they weaseled their way up to the top and learned the ins and outs and, and schemed a way to, to cause this complete meltdown and destruction and, and hid away in a safe 
place while it happened so that they could come back and they would have all this knowledge from the old world and they could just lord over us and uh and do what they're doing now you know i mean we, we don't know but there's there's definitely like an, an evil force you know that's uh running the show it's like we're living in their nightmare yeah and they, i think they've constructed yeah, they, for us. their trick their trick is making us believe that there is no evil force that it's just mm -hmm. all a matter of chance and a matter of coincidence there is no good there is no evil you don't have to pick a side you can stay arbitrary you can stay moral stay in moral relativism you know, you can justify anything really with the right amount of logic, and uh, and that's where they want us. They don't mm -hmm. want us to understand that the uh, the powers of dark and the powers of light exist. Because if you if once you understand that, you've made your choice. It's it's easy to pick the right side, as far as yeah. I'm concerned. Yeah, yeah. You know, but if you keep it away from our perception, you never really have to make the choice. Right. Yep. That's how I see that anyway. Yeah, I mean, they just want us thinking that we're soulless monkey people, you know, on yeah. our spinning water ball. And uh, that it's all just, you know, uh, there's nothing special about it, you know. Yeah. The same with these buildings and mountains and all that. Like, oh, it's just that we need deep time. And it takes a long, it's just a slow, boring, gradual, you know, uh, transfer of sediment or selective erosion or whatever bullshit reasons they give us. It's just basically they make it all so boring, just like with space, you know. Oh, it's far, far away. And it's um, it's just this boring thing. And it's instead of it yeah. being what it really is, which is this, it's a celestial heavenly realm that we're not able to access that yeah. is just bizarre and, and beautiful and beyond our ability to they invert fully everything. understand. It's, it's, you know? it's not vast yeah. and empty, right? If they yeah. invert everything, right? It's just a vacuum of emptiness is what they're telling us it is. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah. I don't think so. I think it's the exact opposite is my guess. Yeah. Anything they tell me, I just think, okay, exact opposite. Yeah, literally. I, That's where yeah, I, I do that too. Anyway. This this one's uh, crazy. Um, you see how it's got this band? Yeah. I, it seems like there are uh, like power bands that we see sometimes, and they're usually really cooked out. Um, there's actually a, I've done some boots on the ground in my little um, town square where I live. Mm. Haven't shared any of it yet, but there's a few different buildings that have these like bands, and it just looks like black tar, like melted black tar that runs the whole length of the building um like it's melted and I've, I've seen this in other old world um structures that are like melted where you can see this like band mm -hmm. that's all cooked out like it's a some kind of power band or something anyway i just want to point that out because yeah you can see it here that's interesting yeah I like part of these. the tech go ahead yeah no it's um, i'm just look at all these and i just think like how silly the historical narrative is that they've given us with the, mm -hmm. the the knights you know and the swords and the horseback and the it's all crap yeah all of that's crap i don't believe any of that at all you Me know neither. the the roaming hordes and the the warring people and the the rape and the murder and mm. the pillaging the vikings pillaging it's 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 a false history we have to get yeah. that out of our heads you know yep. it's not who we are yeah, because then that becomes the foundation of your identity and it's totally all wrong. I think all the I think a lot of the like the scepters and the staffs and the crowns and all that, I think those were tech. I think they yeah. j just like you can put a copper rod in a in a plant and it'll pull from the ether and the plant will grow bigger and be stronger. I think that's why they were always carrying those staffs and scepters and the fascists and all that kind of stuff. I think that was part of a, a technology and even crowns could have been part of a technology. Yeah. And actually, I've got a presentation that I haven't. I have the slideshow ready, but I haven't done the narration. Um, it's hard for me to like get away. I have to like go in my bathroom and I've got two kids, all this kind of thing. But <laughs> <laughs> it's like a whole big setup. But yeah. anyway, it's all this from these um, Jain temples and, and Buddhist temples and uh, or Hindu temples, I mean, and yeah. then the Jain temples. But it looks like a technology like they've got this. I, I would just have to, sh to show like that's why I'm going to make a video about it. But I think yeah. it's clearly like a consciousness technology. And I've heard other people like, you know, I, I am Kair uh, Kairos. Oh yeah. Yep. Okay. He was on um, that uh, Jen and Shap Shapu's channel that I brought up earlier. Yep. And like he, he was talking about how he thinks it could have been that these structures, cause they're like perfect, you know, they could have been like a manifested tech that they somehow could, could manifest um, these, these structures with, you know, some, some means that we don't fully understand. And I think those like consciousness, um, what, what I'm interpreting as like consciousness technology, maybe that was somehow, or I've even thought maybe the, this, this crown of this conscious tech, like activated more of our brain so we could use all of our brain and we were capable of, of doing these kind of wondrous divine things because all of our, our neurons were firing appropriately, you know, like we lose so many as yeah. if you don't use them, you lose them. And they say we only, 
you, you know, used like what non eight percent of our brain, something like that. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I think it could just be stimulating our own natural biology, and that makes us makes us from this viewpoint seem, you know, supernatural, you know, superhuman. Um, but it was just us, you know, activating our full potential and acting on yeah. it. You know? well, I think of, I'm thinking of all these old world buildings that I've, I've, I've sort of gone through in my research and what's missing from them is uh, the ones that are still intact and still, you know, um, had didn't get hit hard by the cataclysm. What's missing is what we call um, human error, where mm -hmm. usually, you know, there's a brick that's a little bit out of alignment um, or there's like a tile in the floor that was cut funny mm -hmm. or, you know, you see it every day. It doesn't matter how high end um, the finishing is on, on a project these days. There's always some element human an element to show that there was a little bit of error and you had to sort of make do in that mm -hmm. corner to make it fit there's none of that all of this is symmetrically perfect everything was put together all the grout lines are perfect everything yeah. is perfect so there's that whatever whatever we're calling human error maybe that's modern day human error um wasn't a part of these this, that construction process in the in the old world right so yeah. that's sort of interesting to correlate with what i am kairos is, is mm -hmm. suggesting i suppose yeah. And it's like everything fit perfectly. They, yeah. Like mm -hmm. typically if you're my, my dad did floors, you know, and whenever you get to a corner, you have to go around something, you have to cut it to make it fit just right. And it's usually a little, you know, wonky in areas, but yeah, with these old world structures, it's like every piece fits perfectly. They don't have to cutting, cutting down stuff and make it, you know what I mean? Like it's just yeah. a perfect fit. Yeah. Total perfection. But look at this. You can see where there's <laughs> see these, this texture here on this yeah. rock. It's just yeah. the melted building. You can see part of the, that those would have been the stones. Yeah. Coming right out into the, what we call the cliff nowadays. Mm -hmm. It's uh, yeah. Down here. <laughs> Not here. You can see blocks. Yeah. So I think all this was building too. All this sure. up here, you know, same colors, the same colors mm -hmm. too, right? The gray right. and then the, the beige or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Same material. Yeah. yeah. Really makes you wonder what it looked like. Eh? What it must yeah. Have looked like. Yeah. Just, well, I think the, the silhouettes of, of, of mountains, you know, if you're just looking at a, a landscape scene, you just have to, I mean, you would basically just reverse what you're seeing. And, and instead of the, the mountain silhouette form, you start, you know, plug buildings in there, you know, so you have mm -hmm. this huge mound that looks like a mountain to us now, but it just would have been tons of, of buildings like mm -hmm. piled on each other, like a, a, a network, you know, or maybe one mm -hmm. big building. I don't know, but yeah, I mean, I, I can't fully imagine it obviously yeah um, nope, but that's I how i try to i try to reverse it in my mind you know and and push it in and pull it up because as it melted it would have came down and widened widened out and you know slumped down but if you push it in they would have been so tall and i wonder too if that's what caused this um the cataclysm that they got so tall like a van der Graaff generator and it you know it got to a point where it just totally shocked it and it backfired mm. and short-circuited from them going too high like the Tower of Babel story, ish. Yeah. Sort of. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And I think there could have been. I think a, a lot of the Bible is uh, basically um, summing up the story for us. But I think it might be simplified. Like if there were survivors of this cataclysm and they were telling their children about what happened, they were describing the world before them and and what happened. It would have to be kind of coded because you wouldn't how if if we didn't have cell phones now how would i explain to someone like oh it's a telepathy machine and it was just you know um rock and glass and plastic but you can send you know what i mean you have to mm -hmm. put it into a way that's understandable especially for like a young mind that's completely separate yeah. from that so i think the idea of like the tower of babel i think there are probably um multiple towers of babel and that it's mm -hmm. just kind of a simplified version to um keep the keep the story alive you know yeah, and it distorted too. It has been these; those stories have been distorted over time. But the grain, mm -hmm. the grain of truth that's in there, is, is still there, which is why they want to totally eliminate the Bible, I suppose, from mm -hmm. all the schools and then the our existence and all that. So there has to be something if they're if they're so averse to to what's in that in the Bible, mm -hmm. there has to be something to it, you know. It just yeah. yeah. I mean, I think um, as far as the Bible goes, I mean, there's there's definitely stuff that resonates with me since since I was young. I've looked into all tons of different. My mom bought me like a collection of, of world religions and I had a little notebook and I would read and just try to make sense of it. But there's stuff in there that just doesn't sit well with me. It doesn't resonate with me. And so I think just like they've corrupted everything else. And that's why they've got Vatican as kind of their their seat of control you know, mm -hmm. for Christianity. And they've got London for the banking and then the U.S. for the military or whatever. Um, I, I, I don't trust that it's all 
authentic, you know, mm-hmm. but, but I think there is, there is truth, you know, in there. Cause you, whenever you read it, it resonates with you. Certain things resonate. So yeah, you just have to use your own judgment, you know, this one's interesting. Um, what we're talking about the church, right? This is obviously mm-hmm. what we would call a depiction of the saints or something similar. And so did they hijack the visuals that were a part of the old world structures mm-hmm. and, and then graft a different story on top of that. Right. Like, what do you make of the halos here? It's that's interesting. A, yep. That's exactly my thoughts. I, I think the same thing. And I think this could be referencing maybe that tech, what we would mm-hmm. call tech or what mm-hmm. we would call magic. Um, yeah. I think they just hijacked this imagery and gave us a new, this book, maybe not have been a, a, a biblical book or if it was, it would have been different, but it had like wisdom that was mm. to, to, you know, um, fully explain how to live this way and live in harmony and have these quote powers, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah. And the cross, and the cross yeah, not the, a, yeah, the, the energetics, right. The cross mm-hmm. having to do with the, the energetics of the ether, not so much a dead man on the cross. Yeah. Right. Not saying there wasn't a Jesus figure either. You know, they probably distorted all of that uh, as well. Can't say for sure, right? Yeah, Jesus could have been the one um, that was trying to, you know, their their hero standing up against this evil force that moved in on the realm. And uh, a lot of those stories, I, yeah, I just think they've really, um, yeah, kind of they've twisted it's muddy it all waters, up. right? Yeah, it's muddy yeah. waters. It's very mm-hmm. difficult to get into without, you know insulting yeah. people. Offending exactly. People. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, people really take it personally. You know, if you, uh, yeah, talking about this kind of stuff, because it's, it's just another foundation of their identity. Yeah. You know, their faith is a, is a, you know, strong hold on people and yeah, they, they really take it personally, but it's, I think it's uh, dangerous to connect yourself, you know, too much to, it, that you, you must always humble yourself, you know, we, because we do not know. Yeah. You have to start from that point. And then it's easy because you don't have to anchor yourself to anything. You just say, I don't know for sure. I'm just hypothesizing. Right. Yeah. And like, I'm okay with being wrong. You know, I, it, all the stuff I'm talking about now is, is just theory. I mean, I feel um, uh, real confident in some of my theories that I have, but I'm, I'm open to, you know, if, if they're disproven, I'm okay with that too. Like I can, you know what I mean? It's, it's yeah. okay to be wrong, but the fact that we're, I think looking into it and talking about it is, is what's important because we, we know that they're lying to us. We know we've been lied to the past few years definitely should have shown everyone what they're capable of. I mean, not, not to include the, the events, you know, the 2001 event, yeah. with planes, you know, planes, yeah. if there were even planes, but you know what I mean? It's yeah. these yeah. people are, nothing is, is out of, you know, out of uh, their ability to. We have, yeah. We have to know. What we're dealing and, with, right? Yeah. Yeah. They and are then, bad, bad, bad people. Yeah. We, and we risk ridicule by, by diving into these waters. You and I here, mm-hmm. we're, we're, we're definitely risking ridicule. I can think of a lot of people in my life, my life who, if they came across this video, would, you know, would instantly want to uh, ridicule me for even discussing the topic. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, and these days I don't really have time for the closed mind. Right. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm reaching out to people with open minds who want to explore these things. Um, and by exploring, by definition, we, we know we're going to get a lot of it wrong, like you were saying, right? But risking ridicule is a, is a key component of uh, coming to uh, new conclusions, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, that's why whenever I was, um, you know, like I mentioned earlier, I would get on like True Earth. I watched a lot of different people and I would try to bring this up. And it's basically because I wanted people to like look into this and let me know what you think. Like, let's figure this out. Like, this is this is kind of a big deal, you know, and yeah. which I haven't really uh, now I just have that whole community that I can really <laughs> watch and interact with and, and try to learn more and all that kind of stuff. So luckily I've discovered that there's a lot more people looking into this, you know, whole area of research, but hmm. now look at that, that one. Look, yeah. Look here. <laughs> Melted brick. Well, you can see the red, you can see the lines there, mm-hmm. like the horizontal lines. Wow. Yeah. That's interesting. Okay this bit here, the column or something. Look yeah. here. It's like heat sty- sty- styrations, heat uh, styrations. <laughs> yeah. It's like... so, something you would see in caves too, that, that, mm-hmm. that type of look right there. Right. Yeah. And you see the blockiness down here. Uh-huh. Yeah. They'll say that this is like, um, like selective erosion, basically that these sediments were softer and, or they'll say there was a, a it used to be a raging river here that mm-hmm. pushed through and finally knocked this open, you know, and this would be like decay. Mm-hmm. time, right? Of time. It's all mm-hmm. that they put, they stretched that timeline out to, to millions of years. Yep. Deep that, time. That looks crazy. The top looks very well, like 
Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, like this is kind of rounded here. Mm -hmm. You can see like little closed apertures. Look, that's like a melting. It's kind of yeah. dipping out of that hole, pouring out of that hole there. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah a, lot, a lot of times I'll just look at different, um, you know, like mountain ranges or just different, you know, the look at the topography of the, the earth and you just start you can pick mm -hmm. out these things, you know, once you see them. You start to see it, right? I, I mean, I see it too, like in my daily life. I live pretty close mm -hmm. to the Rocky Mountains and I'd be driving down the highway and you turn your head and the Rocky Mountains are vast, right? They're huge. But you're looking on the side of the highway and you're like, that's a wall. Wow. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, should go. Like, that's, you know. Have you ever gone in any, is there any kind of like little caves or anywhere you could go and like mm. check it out and see if you could find anything? Mostly we just have like waterfall hikes and things like that. I don't know. I don't know of any caves around here. Actually, that's there probably are some. Um, you have to drive a good five, six, seven hours before you get it to anything like that. So it's it's a bit of a commitment to do that kind of thing. But I should do that. I'll do that next summer. Maybe take the kids out to one of those areas and get a bunch of boots on the ground. Yeah, so, man. Uh, I really wish we. I've had some mountains or caves or some. There's some um, caves that are. It's probably like a two-hour drive away, maybe three-hour drive away. Um, that I know of, there might be more close by that I've never heard of. Um, but yeah, I wish there was stuff like this. I could go check out in person. Cause I mean, whatever happened here, it's like, it just totally melted everything to red dirt. You know, we just have red dirt yeah. everywhere, just rolling yeah. hills, you know, that are pastures mostly. And there's just a few select, um, little red brick old world buildings, like our courthouse and around it, yeah. there's some other, and my courthouse, I've got a video I've been trying, I've got so many videos I'm trying to put together, but it's just Tom, you know, but um, my courthouse has two other identical courthouses here in Texas. So there's three at least that I know of that are completely identical courthouses right. and they're old world structures. It's like they were models, you know, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. different models. Um, anyway, I thought yeah. that was really interesting. But look at all this back here. This, like, well, I was going to say, thing. like, I, I'm starting to do uh, um, courthouses by state videos where I'm just going to show all the courthouses um, one after another. And so I just finished Missouri, I think. And I think I found three courthouses that were identical there as well. Like the same. Really? Thing. I had to go back and make sure I wasn't in the same county. I'm like, wait, no, it's a different count, different town. What? 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 It's the same building. Wow, that's <laughs> yeah. awesome. Yeah, I, I've never heard of I never knew that was a thing. I, yeah. you know, I didn't know They're that. They're crazy. The courthouses are amazing. So I'm just going to showcase the visuals for people mm -hmm. you know, on those. I just, uh, something I've been doing lately. I think it's important, especially yeah. when you go state by state, because it, no matter where you live, especially in the mid Midwest area in the States, it's like, man, it's everywhere, guys. So your court, start with the courthouse and work mm -hmm. your way around the town square. And yep. yeah, it's so cool. I wish we had that here. I'd be all over it. Yeah. So you don't really have many. Any old world structures close by you? No, I have to. I have to drive six, seven hours before there's anything like that. Jeez. Yeah. I think we're covered in mud. I think I told you that last time. It's like we're covered in hundreds of feet of feet of mud. I think here. Didn't you say though that somebody on one of your videos you were saying how you knew somebody that had dug, that did like oil or something, and they yeah. dug down like thirty feet and they came across a tree. Three hundred like feet. 300 yeah 300 feet down Drill, they were drilling they drilled down 300 feet and then they drilled through a tree yeah <sighs> crazy <laughs> it's crazy i wish there was somebody that was very knowledgeable about um forestry you know that could that could look at some of these sites and be like oh that's a so-and-so tree and that tree would be roughly this age because i think that also can give us a better idea of the timeline you yeah. know there's there's tons of these um you know destroyed structures too but you'll have like trees growing out that they're just like you know um, twisted into the the well, rubble yeah where i live 200 years is a really old tree 200 250 year old tree is a, is a mm -hmm. very old tree yeah that know. seems pretty yeah i think that's probably around here as well it's about mm -hmm. 200 years if it's... i know when you get to the coastal regions they say 800 some of the cedars on the coast and stuff like that so mm -hmm. i don't know for sure that could be also misdating who knows right who knows how yeah. what you can trust because things grow really fast on the coast a lot faster than they do on the inland where i live so who knows? Yeah. Look at this, eh? <laughs> Somebody mm -hmm. spent a lot of time carving that uh, that uh, <laughs> square square pillar in the middle there. Right. Someone did, did a really good job on that one. <laughs> they worked hard here, and by the time they got done, they died. <laughs> so they didn't died. get finished. <laughs> yeah. They didn't hand down the knowledge to their, their ancestors, so they, they weren't able to sculpt quite so accurately. <laughs> see, here you can see the texture of what yeah. would have been the, the stone uh, or the brick that became like stone here, too. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny how it's so obvious, eh? Once you mm -hmm. once you're open to it, you just gotta open the yeah. door. Yeah. yeah, you just have to look, you know? You just have to look. I love it. So what do you think? Should we wrap this up? Sure. I think that's the last one anyway. So cool. It's wow. a good stopping point. Cool. Yeah, this has been an enjoyable conversation and I want to do it again. So maybe we'll uh reconvene in a couple uh couple of months or whenever we're able to and um, available. Yeah, I'd love okay. that. It's great to have someone to talk to. I mean, I, you know, I don't know anybody in real life that I can talk to about this stuff. So um, yeah, I'd love, love to do it again. And I want to encourage people that are watching this kind of stuff that resonate with this kind of stuff to uh, get involved with that too. Whether you start your own channel or contact me, I'm pretty happy to throw anyone on my channel that uh, has something that they want to share. I, I think it's all about uh, getting the information out there or you want to yeah, start your own YouTube channel and, and uh, don't have to be good with tech. Look at my channel, right? I got 10,000 <laughs> subs good. and I, I don't really know what I'm doing <laughs> as far as videos go. Right? You do uh, so, good. You're like, you're my yeah. favorite. You're my yeah, favorite. Yeah, yeah. Uh, stop, stop, stop. You are. I love it. So good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a guy with a uh, paint 3D and, uh, and a program on my computer to screen record. So anyone can do this. And if uh, and everyone has a different angle, look at Ashley and I as when we get together like this, um, our perspectives, and you can sort of build on each other's perspectives and come to new mm -hmm. conclusions. So I appreciate you joining me, Ashley. Um, Thank and, you. Uh, look forward to the next time. Awesome. Me too. It was fun.